Hi, my name's Kirsty Richardson and I'm an Alexander Technique teacher. And I thought I'd do a little short film about hands. Um, I've been thinking a lot about hands given this time of COVID. Some of us are working incredibly hard with our hands and some of us feel a little bit redundant or are doing a lot less than we would normally be doing um, with our hands. Um, and the hands are very, very interesting because uh, we hold a lot of tension in our hands. So our hands can get very dewy and very busy, unnecessarily so. Um, so I thought perhaps it might be a nice uh, thing to look at today, um, how we use our hands and how maybe we could use them better and what they're an indication of. Um, so if your hands are very grabby and tight, you know, the chances are the rest of your body is going to be quite uh, in that state as well. So how we can, just by simply using our hands differently, maybe, maybe have a different way in our whole body. So first of all, let's get comfortable. Um, I'm sitting on a chair um, and my feet are flat on the floor, but I would like my back to be leaning against something. And because I'm a little bit further forwards, I'm going to put a cushion behind my back. So make sure you get comfortable. So I've got a cushion behind my back, my feet are on the floor. And then we're going to think about directions. In the Alexander Technique, we talk a lot about directions. So I'm thinking about my spine lengthening up. I'm not lengthening it, I'm just thinking of it bubbling up and thinking from the crown of my head up to the ceiling. My sitting bones, the bony bits of the bottom, are dropping into the chair, so I'm letting my pelvis drop into the chair. And then my feet are both flat on the floor and they're just opening to the floor. And then I'm thinking about the hips here. Notice if you're holding any tension there and just allow that area to soften and then you can just allow the thighs to release, the knees can fall forwards and away. And then across the shoulder girdle, we're just widening. So we're not pinching back, we're not hyperextending and throwing everything forward, we're just thinking of widening across the front of the chest, allowing the shoulder blades to drop down the back. And we should feel pretty comfortable, as long as we're resting, or we're not in a state of getting ready. So just a comfortable position where the body can just be in alignment. Okay, so if we think about the hands, um, the hand has 27 bones in it, and I've got a hand here. Um, <laughs> uh, so 27 bones, and if you see at the bottom here, you have sort of pebble-like bones, eight of those, and then 19 longer bones, and they make up the fingers and the thumb. Um, and interestingly, uh, the knuckle for bones are here for the fingers, and then the knuckle bone, so where we, where we bend from is here, quite low down on the thumb. And that gives us our opposable thumb. So we can do so many intricate things with our hands, and we do. So um, they're very, very complex things. And most of us hold too much tension in them. We over tighten things, we grab things, and we overuse the finger and the thumb. So that's what I want to look at first. Um, if we go to pick up a glass, which I have here, um, the chances are that most of us will grab it with the finger and the thumb. And that is using all of these muscles here and maybe our neck too, and it might be heavy. So we overuse a way of grabbing a glass and we can do that with many other things. So you can think about that throughout this day, how we could do it differently. And I'm going to suggest to you that if we think of our fingers extending, so directing with our fingers, leading with our fingers, opening our hand and using the whole hand to take the glass, that then the glass becomes lighter. This, these two fingers, the thumb and the forefinger are softer and there's less tension in the whole body. And the reason for that is where the muscles are in the body. So if I put this down, I'm going to ask you to put your two thumbs together and you're just going to press just a little bit, a little bit of tension and what you'll feel is the muscles in this inner circle engage 
And that's what we're using when we pick up the glass with our uh, forefinger and thumb. So we're using all these inner circle muscles, the muscles at the front of the body. Now, if I ask you to turn your hands over and then push your little fingers together, what you'll find is that the muscle at the back of the arm, and then some of you will feel it on your shoulder blades and maybe further into your back, are engaging. And so when we pick up the glass with the whole hand, we are using our back muscles. And our back muscles are very, very strong and they're not gonna fatigue in the same way if we're just using the shoulder, front of the arm, bit of the neck to pick up a glass. So how we use our hands affects our whole body. And, um, and unfortunately, we live in a world where we're, we're, we're always rushing. So that's the quickest way, always the quickest way, or so we think. But if we could just get into a new habit of reaching and extending the fingers and holding with the whole hand, we'd find that we probably did it in the same time. And also that we're saving our body some of the tension. Hands can be functional and tender, aggressive, and helpful um, and they are reassuring you know especially in times like this this is one of the big big sad losses that we we reassure people we hug people and we hold their hands and um, you know hands really just a hand on the shoulder really can calm someone down um, and so let's just play with that a little bit with ourselves how we can how we can have a little bit fun a little bit of fun with our own hands and maybe have a different relationship with them and also remembering that our hands are incredibly creative so I'm going to ask you to put your hands on your thighs but perhaps it might be more comfortable if you get another cushion <laughs> and place that on your thighs first and the first thing I'm going to get you to do is just relax your hands just releasing your hands and then if we go back to those directions that we had at the beginning, so we're thinking of our spine bubbling up, thinking up from the crown of the head, sitting bones just releasing into the chair, soles of the feet opening and dropping into the floor, the knees are fall, falling forwards and away, we're just opening in the chest, and then the arms are just falling away from the shoulder girdle. And then when we have these amazing hands, 27 bones in each. So we're just releasing and allowing the hands to open. Some of you may feel that your hands are a little bit more rounded and that's fine. Don't overextend and push. Just allow um, the hands to be as they are. And especially with this thumb, lower thumb joint, just allow that to just soften. And then as we're there, we're going to also turn over the hands and think about opening and softening in the palm of the hands. So we're just lengthening, opening and softening in the palm of the hands. What you'll notice when you start to think about your hands and allow your hands to uh, respond is that your hands will become much more aware of the textures they're touching. So this is a bit velvety and I'm really aware of that texture on my hand because I'm allow my hands to be a little bit more receptive. The other thing you're going to notice is that your breath starts to change. So if we've got tension in our hands, the chances are we've got tension in, the up, in our body, especially the upper body, and therefore in our chest, and therefore that will be affecting our breathing. So again, if we can release our hands, it kind of trickles throughout the body, and we can allow the breath just to ebb and flow Lovely. So these hands that tell many stories, um, we're going to spend a few minutes with just moving around, just articulating and moving, like a hand dance. But if you don't want to move them and you just want to stay with them and just stay with your breath, that's also fine. And just invite you to explore moving your hands. Thinking of the joints, where we curl and uncurl. And when other parts of the arm become involved, when the wrist becomes involved, the elbow, maybe your 
moving the lower bones of the arms from the elbow, the ulnar radius, just moving around each other, or whether the whole arm and shoulder girdle becomes involved. So just take a moment. It's not an exercise. You're not going to do four on one side, four on the other. Take a moment just to play with these amazing hands, with all of their stories. And notice, I've noticed a scar on my hand from childhood, a bump on my middle finger from squeezing the pencil too tight at school. And then where my ring is that the finger has narrowed over the years. So we're just having a little duet with our hands. And it doesn't all have to be smooth. It may have some moments of sudden movements and then it may come back in. playful look at our hands and how they move. So familiar, they're so familiar to us and yet we spend very little time observing them. And what you'll notice is as you're moving your hands, your body very slightly can't help getting involved. So it ricochets through the whole body. And we find that we have more spaciousness in all of our joints just through releasing some tension in our hands. And then we're just gonna come back to sitting. Notice if your breath has changed. and enjoy the stillness. You will probably still feel the dance resonating in you just through moving our hands. So my invitation to you is to spend your, this day with your hands. Thank you very much.